do so. Did you lose your monopod again? Did we lose another monopod? Didn't you? No, I took it off last night. You lost it on the trail last time, didn't you? Last, uh, that was the last time, but you guys rescued it. Did, did you by any chance miss anything a while back? What? My GoPro and my Camelback. Is that about it? <laughs> this time, I must have left it in the room. I'm taking that out. I thought you said you checked the room. Uh, I did. Apparently, it did it very well. I knew it, I knew it. They were too quiet in the last <laughs> Wish we had an extra day. You wish you guys didn't have to be back to work till Wednesday. How about if we didn't have to be back to work, period? <laughs> and that would be nice too. The thing is, Bob, it's not that I'm lazy. It's that I just don't care. So, um, you know, what's the deal here? Can we go up and just kind of check it out? Or, you know, <laughs> we don't want to do the tour because we're damn but cheap bastards. <laughs> 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 Give me the giggles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these guys are making me laugh. How are you, sir? We uh, are from Charleston, South Carolina, and we just had seen a picture of it. Is it possible to see it, or you have to do the tour? Have to do the tour. We couldn't just ride up and just take a look and. Sorry? 25 each. And it takes how long? 30 minutes. Ah. <sighs> We don't have that much time. We're riding the whole Natchez Trace Trail. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. You sure we can't just drive up, drive through? Yeah. I gotcha. Excuse me. Am I being fired? Thank you very much. Have a good day. Hey, Chris, where are we? We are at the Grand Village of the Natchez Trace Indians, or as Steve likes to say, Native Americans. Native Americans. We don't know what's politically correct anymore. Our world is so weird. But the sign says, the Grand Village of... So we're gonna go in and check it out because we believe that that's the beginning of the Natchez Trace National Parkway. For us. For us. And it can be for you too. Only if you like and subscribe. We're gonna walk right in like we're on the place. Village. Yeah, tell us a little bit about this place. We just kind of saw it on the fence. You are at the last mound center of the, well, mounds of the United States. This site was one of the only ones that was still used by Native Americans when the colonists arrived. So of all the thousands of mound sites throughout the United States, this one was still in use and we know how they were using them. We know there was a chief living on top of one mound. We know there was a temple on top of another. We know they had celebrations in the plazas in between. And so other mound sites like Cahokia, which is the largest in the United States, mm -hmm. base their interpretation on what happened right here at the Grand Village. Did you have more data or information? How did that happen? That just because it was the longest, the, the one that was still running? It was still running. Uh, the French who settled here in about 1716, they established Fort Rosalie. So we're the oldest settlement on the Mississippi. Uh -huh. They left behind uh, Antoine Simon Le Page du Prats wrote The History of Louisiana. He wrote about his time here with the Nachi Indians. Mm. And he kept detailed records about what happened right here at the Grand Village. Huh. So we were able to go back 
archaeologically at the different mound sites in the Natchez area and find out which one where the French were occupying mm -hmm. and along with the Natchez. And the, all of this French presence artifacts. you see here, uh. these artifacts were found here well, along with thousands of others sure, sure. Uh, that we were able to find here. And so, uh, so this was the mound site in particular. So we're, we're doing the Natchez Trace uh, Parkway all the way up. We, we came all the way from Charleston and we thought this would be the perfect place to start. One question I have for you, how do you pronounce Natchez, Natchez? The Natchez Indians pronounce Natchez. it Nache. Nache, okay. Okay. Like Spanish. Like Spanish. And then the town is pronounced Natchez. What is the significance of the mound? Okay, a mound is a man-made hill. It is built in several stages by the entire community. So literally you would have thousands of people come in from a tribe to build these mounds. Mm -hmm. Our last one was built in four stages. So think about it as building a cake. So you build with dirt and then you layer it with clay to mm -hmm. make it seal off. Then you would put a building structure on top of it, be it a chief's hut or the temple. And then when that chief dies, the building would be burnt and anyone really? erected after that uh, Hut had burned, they uh -huh. would again build on top of it and then put that layer. Get so when you cut into it as an archaeologist, it looks like a layer cake. Mm -hmm. Such as when you get here, you can see three visible mounds. We have three mounds that are underground because we have five feet of wash soil that is covered up. Mm -hmm. So think five feet, that's my height. <laughs> that's five feet of dirt that's covering these mounds. <laughs> Five feet of five feet of goodness. Yes, <laughs> that's protecting our mounds. Okay. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Can you uh, spell Mississippi with one I? Uh, no. M I S S I P P I. <laughs> My mother taught me how to spell Mississippi. Would you like to know how that works? Yeah. Capital M dot a letter crooked letter crooked letter dot a letter crooked letter crooked letter dot a letter hump back hump back I. <laughs> and there you go. You think you're too cool for school. But I got a news flash for you, Walter Cronkite. You aren't. Well, gentlemen. Hey, there's the sign. We are about to enter the notches, the natches. The, How the, you pronounce it, Jason? Well, this is the Natchez, Natchez, Nache, Nacha trace. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on if you're Spanish, French, English, or Native American. Natchez, trace, parkway, left turn. I mean, the French added the Z. They always add those unnecessary letters. Flourishes. All for one. One for all. Ladies and gentlemen, as the official navigator for this trip, I'm just going to inform you that I am officially very happy at this moment because I can turn off all my navigation. We have nowhere to turn, nothing to do, except follow this road. I am so excited. <laughs> So across this parkway is a portion of the old Natchez Trace. It's a wilderness road, more of a trail now, that originated from a series of trails used by the Southern Indian tribes. The Natchez Trace is politically, economically, socially, militarily important for the United States in its early development. Among those that traveled this road though were American Indians, traders, soldiers, post riders, the original mailmen, settlers, slaves, and even circuit riding preachers, outlaws, and adventurers like us. This trail serves as a reminder of those who contributed to the events that shaped the broad patterns of our common history.
So a few miles up from where we just stopped at mile marker 10.3 is Emerald Mound. And this is the second largest Indian mound in existence today. We know that the Natchez left Emerald Mound, which is a large base mound, but it had eight mounds on top of it. So you can still see the north and south mounds. Mm -hmm. There were three on either side. Those have eroded over time. At 35 feet tall, it was all done by hand. And uh, it basically dates to about 1300 to 1600 and um, mostly used for a lot of ceremonial situations. So a lot of these mounds are used for burials, but this one has this massive plateau and there are two ceremonial mounds on top of it. And uh, so it was not just used for burials, but for also ceremonies involving some of the different aspects of the tribe's religious ceremonies and things like that. Really, really cool stop. I highly recommend this one when you're doing the Natchez Trace Trail. Welcome to the Locust Inn. By early 1800 standards, this was a luxury home. And not only was it a home, it was an inn, it has a separate bedroom. It's really kind of cool, the craftsmanship on it is amazing. How they did the tongue and groove and different things. So travelers, when they would stay here, saw it as a, as a major plus compared to having to camp out. It's one of the few remaining inns left in existence along the Natchez Trail. Man, we're out back of the Mount Locust Inn and I brought my infrared camera, which is converted by Kolari Vision. It's a Nikon Coolpix A. And I saw this uh, little fence kind of meanders down through the field and through these beautiful trees. And with the infrared camera, I knew that that would be a really great leading line right into the image. So, oh, it's beautiful out here. What's your name? John Griffin. John Griffin, and you? Joni Everett. Everett. And you say you're a motorcycle rider as well, what do you have? Yes, yeah, I have an Indian Scout. All right, all right, and where do you ride? Where? Yeah. I live in uh, Meridian, Mississippi, and kind of all over. Right. Um, I haven't really been on any long trips like you guys, but I've done a few trips, uh, like locally, um, over to the Delta for the blues kind of thing, the blues trail. Mm -hmm. uh, I've ridden on the Natchez Trace. I like doing that. So uh, do we so far. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but I'm really interested in getting into the adventure biking. Very good. I'd love to He's do the, the, uh, the, the Transamerica like you yeah. guys do. Yeah. Look at the routes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I really, really like to do that. Well, if you watch ours, you'll you'll figure out how not to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch me, especially. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the right way to learn a lesson. It is. It is. Yeah, we're not afraid to show our oops. <laughs> no, we show we show exactly what happens. I'm all about oops. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what it's all about. It's fun. You know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Yeah. That's right. We well, all have a great day, and thanks for uh, checking too. us out. Yeah. Okay. You guys be careful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> y'all enjoy. Now, behind the locust inn and plantation, which was a real working plantation in the day, you'll find a small cemetery for 
the slaves. And having grown up in Africa, it's a humbling experience for me to be out here and to realize that all of my friends growing up were Africans, and yet here in the United States they were treated as slaves. And uh, so it's kind of somber um, for me to be out here and to realize that out of all of the slaves that worked on this plantation, only one grave still remains. All right, guys, we are rolling on the Natchez Street Parkway. It is fantastic, the beautiful weather. The sun is out, partly cloudy. There probably is a chance of rain, but who cares? That's a negative thought, so we'll just get right by that. <laughs> Presently, it is 85 degrees. I dare say, as long as you're rolling, if you get into these stuff, too bad. But when we stop, I'm going to say it's probably in the 80% power range. It is pretty thick. Mm. But it is a beautiful day. We're riding. We're heading north. And we are about four miles away from one of my favorite things. What's that? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it is beautiful out here, people. You need to do this. It is very cool. A lot of history. One thing about the Natchez Trace is that uh, you'll notice it's very curvy. And there's a reason for that. The original trace kind of follows the mounds and hilltops. So it weaves a little bit because two reasons. One, the original hikers, it was less energy to go along the, the ridges than it was to go up and down over the mountains. And two was by staying to the tops of the ridges, they had a less chance of being accosted by thieves and highway robbers. And now I'm afraid we must get on to the more regrettable state of our brief acquaintance. <laughs> they, could, they could watch through their surroundings a little bit better. So that's part of why the not just Trace Parkway is, is kind of a curvy road. It's by nature. Oh, yeah. 
Nice. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be awesome. If you'll stand right there, go back just behind the ladder there. Yes, right? put your right hand right here. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. You to put that in your pocket. Look at you're gonna look at professional model. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Very cool. Let me tell you something. Uh, Pick it up in Shave my face. <laughs> One picture could change your life. That looks amazing. Great smile. Eyes right here. Yes. And then come over here. We'll do one in the doorway. And y'all come back and see me here. All right. You tell I got in that tree on fall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Put your left hand up here holding the door. Nice. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good Oh yeah, look at you. You look like you're on this place. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> chicken. Ooh, chicken. Perfect. You know, if you call ahead my recipe, you can get a five-star joke. <laughs> Saturday morning. Grandmother's house. Mm. My mother gave me a gift. I thought she was trying to make me out of girl. She was teaching me how to cook. Uh huh. I had no idea. I bought this building here. Matter of fact, the guy told me one day, he says, go and see if you can make something out of it. And this was an empty, big old empty building. Mm -hmm. And Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. This is yard sales, state sales, dumpster diving. And the whole nine yards. I can put the best doors you can ever have. I refuse to change it. Because the old lady said, you change your door. Change the building, we won't come back. Uh, not the same. It's yeah. not the same. And I had no intentions. I was going to flip it. You know, you get something? Right. And I knew I could get my money out of it, right? Yeah. Right. He just got this money out of me. Highway 61 runs from beyond Chicago to the Gulf of Mexico. And I don't want just the restaurant on Highway 61. I want the restaurant on Highway 61. 